Assalamu alaikum everybody. Today we'll be talking about Cox postulate. In some places it's also pronounced as Cox postulate. I think you should go with the one that you like. I'll go with Cox. But before getting into the video, I like to tell you guys that these videos are meant for educational purposes. Things and treatments may change with time. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is always welcomed in the comments section. Grab a pen and a notepad and let's get started. Koch's postulates were developed to explain the germ to disease concept. It is a set of four criteria and its purpose is to establish a causal relationship between a microbe and a specific disease. Microbe being responsible for causing the specific disease and the disease being caused by a specific microbe. It was named after Robert Koch who was working on anthrax in Germany because of his love for bacteriology. Let's talk about its development. It was formulated by Robert Koch along with Friedrich Loeffler in late 19th century like in 1884 and they were then refined and published in 1890. Now let's talk about these four Koch postulates. The first one is that microorganism must be present in all the individuals suffering from disease and absent in healthy individuals. Okay, let me explain that point to you. As you can see, this person, this is infected with a disease. So if we'll take a sample, let's say blood sample from that person, that sample must have the microbe or pathogen responsible for causing any disease this person is suffering from. And if we take a sample from that healthy person, let's say a blood sample, that should not have any pathogen in it, right? The second postulate is that the microorganism then must be isolated and grown in a pure culture. Third one is that that grown microbe in a culture is inoculated in a healthy host. And that healthy host is, let's say, um, this one. And it's now an experimental host. And the microbe inoculated in that healthy host should do what? It should reproduce the disease. Postulate number four is that the same microorganism then must be re-isolated from this experimentally infected host and then it is identified as being identical to the original specific causative agent. Now let's talk about the limitations or exceptions of Koch's postulates. The postulate number one. Koch later abandoned the universalist requirement. You now might be thinking, what, which universalist requirement? The postulate number one stated that all the infected organisms must have the pathogen in their samples and all the healthy individuals must not have. But when Koch discovered about asymptomatic carriers and subclinical infections, he abandoned that requirement. Let me tell you why he abandoned when he discovered these two things. In asymptomatic carriers, healthy people show no symptoms, but they do have that pathogen in their body. And subclinical infection is kind of preclinical infection that occurs prior to infection or is just a start of infection with no or maybe slight signs or symptoms. So when he discovered about these two things, he thought that in my postulate number one, I'm saying that and that is not being applied to these two states. So he then abandoned that requirement. For example, Cornibacterium, if you want to know more about that, I do have a video on that. It only causes diphtheria in small percentage of those infected. Okay, let's say we take a sample from a population. In that sample, 50% individual shows Cornibacterium in their blood, right? And half of them are not showing. Those who are showing, a few of them are showing diphtheria and its signs and symptoms, but the rest of them are not. Postulate number two does not apply to pathogens who are incapable of growing in pure culture. As Cott said in his postulate number two, all the organisms responsible for causing diseases in individuals, when they are isolated from host, they must be grown in pure culture but some pathogens like viruses they do not grow in pure cultures so this postulate is not applicable on those pathogens postulate number three Koch's experiments with tuberculosis and cholera showed that not all organisms exposed to an infectious agent will acquire the infection in the postulate number three Koch said that when the healthy individual is 
exposed to the pathogen isolated from culture that individual will get the infection but this did not happen in every case but why this did not happen the reason is that individuals would maintain their health for proper immune functioning they might have acquired immunity from the previous exposure they might have been vaccinated against that infection or they might have the genetic immunity there are certain other exceptions like some pathogens can cause several diseases for example varicella zoster virus it causes chickenpox and shingles but Koch said that a specific microbe is responsible for causing just a specific disease. And also that one disease is caused by several pathogens. For example, meningitis. It is caused by bacteria, fungi, viruses. Alright guys, let's review everything really quick. Koch postulates our general guidelines or principles to identify pathogens that could be responsible for causing a disease and could be detected with the available methods and were demonstrably alive, which means that they have their own metabolic system. Koch postulates is a set of criteria that is used to establish a causal relationship between a microbe and a disease. It was proposed by Robert Koch and also named after him. Koch postulates mandate the presence of microbe in all cases of the disease, its isolation and growth in pure culture, its ability to cause the same disease when introduced into a healthy host, the experimental host if you remember, and subsequent re-isolation from newly infected host to confirm its role in the disease. Koch's postulates remain foundational in microbiology for linking specific pathogens to infectious diseases. And that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any suggestions, feel free to leave them below in the comments. And if you want to connect with me on my socials, I've got my Instagram, Twitter, and I'll catch you in the next video. Till then, assalamu alaikum.